outstanding, consistently good so far for Lafayette. And A.B. can nail that triple. And there is Mr. Cummins who goes up high and kisses it off the glass. A little strong by Harrison Gaines. Nice defensive uh, trip that time by the Leopards, and they're quickly into the offensive zone. Gaines had a dozen against Navy. Way outside, bottom of the hole. A triple by Paul Cummins. There's nothing wrong with that thumb. That's his 10th triple of the year. He now has 136 threes. He is now, he is tied for sixth in that spot. Tied with him coming into the ball game, as you'll get a look at it again, was Andrew Brown, who had 135 tied for sixth. Well, Paul Cummins just took off. You know, we talked about the inside-out play uh, of the uh, Lafayette offense. Hold on. Now, when the ball is down here, watch where the help has to come from. Okay? People are kicking in, looking to help. Hold it right here. The, the defense collapses around the ball in the post, and now the kick out, and that allows Paul Cummins to step into his jump shot. But that to Gruner will come in. Abdullah, the sockets, and Betley wings on the rebound. Why not? It's Paul Cummins. Well, he and Brown are now tied again. It's a little dribble handoff, Gary. So we get the timeout. Let's take a look at some of these triples. A Paul Cummins. A barrage. 30 second timeout. Ball by Penn. Brown. In there. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, he's giving Lafayette very quickly. Did Lafayette playing great defense, Gary. Trying to get it into Grand Deary. And that was great defense by Gruner. Yeah, it sure was because he did not foul and he held his position. Look at the entry pass by Cummins. Look at the shot by Bentley. He's got tits, the Quakers. That is as exciting a four-minute stretch as you will see. There's Cummins. Nice job by Gruner to force the turnover. And look at the no-look inside. Matt Bentley just returned. Assistance for Lafayette. Going to that matchup on the inside, Gary. Ted Detmer is playing away from the basket as Cummins gets a clean look. Can't let him go. Can't let him go. He's tied for sixth. And that the absence of Jared Mintz hurts, but of course, early in the team, you just go out and do what you do and hope it works. Back to you. Well, they got the tap, Scott, so that searched inside. He can't get it over the front of the rim. Matt Bentley will scramble and scrap for it. And Lafayette will keep it. Out of the corner, Cummings. 4-3, he'll drain it. Lafayette up 3-0. Now well, there you have it. We've had four missed layups and <laughs> leave it to Paul. It's a very good defensive team, Gary. Down inside, Everett Schmidt. He's been their toughest. Paul. And Horton, probably Lafayette's toughest matchup. Off the screen. Paul Cummins, bottom of the hole. Well, Fran O'Hanlon loves it when guys go under screens against his offense. That little dribble. Something I like to avoid uh, during the week, Gary. Uh, but at the <laughs> beginning of the game, Fran O'Hanlon talking to his charges about simply being alert, watching where things are happening. He said everything's too late. Absolutely. Just a high screen that Central Connecticut did not do a good job of negotiating. Mark did not get out. Ooh, that probably should. And there you see the slam dunk. Paul Cummins uh, probably is the poster child for Lafayette's offense in the first half, Gary. He got him started with a couple of threes, but everybody kind of joined in. Bilal Abdullah had one. So did Andrew Brown have one. Lafayette shooting very score in the first round. Yeah, they're an explosive team, and you get the sense, Gary, with all these freshmen. There's a fade screen. And Andrew's all set up for it. Oh, yeah. Down, though. But they lose the basketball. I'm not sure if it was a... You know, Gary, I just looked down for a second. As soon as I looked up, Central Connecticut State had the ball again. Down by eight. And stolen away. Bob. So we approach the six-minute mark. Lafayette up by ten. That's what they led by at halftime. Inside to Gruner. He'll kick it out. Cummins again. That's his spot. And he's got it down. Paul Cummins with his fourth of the ball game. Cummins just took off. You know, we talked about the inside-out play of the uh, Lafayette offense. Hold on, now when the ball is down here, watch where the help has to come from, okay? People are kicking in, looking to help. Hold it right here. The, the defense collapses around the ball in the post, and now the kick out, and that allows Paul Cummins to step into his jump shot. But that's when Gruner will come in. Abdullah, the sockets, and Betley wings on the rebound. Why not? It's Paul Cummins. Well, he and Brown are now tied again. It's a little dribble handoff, Gary. 
so we get the timeout. Let's take a look at some of these triples. A Paul Cummins. A barrage. 30 second timeout. by Penn. Brown. In there. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, he's given Lafayette very quickly. Did Lafayette playing great defense, Gary. Trying to get it into Grand Deary. And that was great defense by Gruner. Yeah, it sure was because he did not foul and he held his position. Look at the entry pass by Cummins. Look at the shot by Bentley. He's got tits, the Quakers. That is as exciting a four minute stretch as you will see. There's Cummins. Nice job by Gruner to force the turnover. And look at the no look inside. Matt Bentley just returned. Assistance for Lafayette. Going to that matchup on the inside, Gary. Ted Detmer is playing away from the basket as Cummins gets a clean look. Can't let him go. Can't let him go. He's tied for sixth. And that the absence of Jared Mintz hurts, but of course, early in the team, you just go out and do what you do and hope it works. Back to you. Well, they got the tap, Scott, so that searched inside. He can't get it over the front of the rim. Matt Bentley will scramble and scrap for it, and Lafayette will keep it. Out of the corner, Cummings. 4-3, he'll drain it. Lafayette up 3-0. Now there you have it. We've had four missed layups and <laughs> leave it to Paul. It's a very good defensive team, Gary. Down inside, Everett Schmidt. He's been their toughest. Paul. And Horton, probably Lafayette's toughest matchup. Off the screen. Paul Cummins, bottom of the hole. Well, Fran O'Hanlon loves it when guys go under screens against his offense. That little dribble. Something I like to avoid uh, during the week, Gary. Uh, but at the <laughs> beginning of the game, Fran O'Hanlon talking to his charges about simply being alert, watching where things are happening. He said everything's too late. Absolutely. Just a high screen that Central Connecticut did not do a good job of negotiating. Mark did not get out. Ooh, that probably should. And there you see the slam dunk. Paul Cummins uh, probably is the poster child for Lafayette's offense in the first half, Gary. He got him started with a couple of threes, but everybody kind of joined in. Bilal Abdullah had one. So did Andrew Brown have one. Lafayette shooting very score in the first round. Yeah, they're an explosive team, and you get the sense, Gary, with all these freshmen. There's a fade screen. And Andrew's all set up for it. Oh, yeah. Down, though. But they lose the basketball. I'm not sure if it was a, you know, Gary, I just looked down for a second. As soon as I looked up, Central Connecticut State had the ball again. Down by eight. And stolen away. Bob. So we approach the six minute mark. Lafayette get up by 10. That's what they led by at halftime. Inside to Gruner. He'll kick it out. Cummins again. That's his spot. And he's got it down. Paul Cummins with his fourth of the ball game. And Lafayette is up by a 61 to 47 score. And Paul Cummins, that time he puts it down, this time he gives it up. No matter what, it still led to six points. We'll be back. Next is Everest Schmidt, 6'7 senior, Orleans, California. He is averaging 3.3 points per ball game, 3.7 rebounds per game. Number four is Michael Gruner, 6'1 sophomore, Bethesda, Maryland, 6.3 points per ball game. Sure, shot. Look at that rebound. Proctor just sneaked inside. There's a good rebound by Lafayette's Mintz. Mintz and Everett Schmidt are giving Lafayette good minutes on the interior. They need it. They got it. Paul Cummins with another triple. Lafayette is hitting. And then on the outside, it's Matt Bentley after some real good rotations on the inside. And then it's Paul Cummins. So it isn't just one guy getting hot. A product moves for that very reason. That's just fundamentally sound low post play by Everett Schmidt, the product of a lot of hours in the gym and a lot of hard work. We've said the words hanging around three times now, and the Leopards are still doing that. Can't give that shot up, although Proctor missed it. And a nice job of shaking it loose inside to Paul Cummins. Quickly down the floor, drops it to Matt Bentley, back to Paul. He'll try to get within three more. As now the lead is down to two as Paul Cummings hits his second trip and was right there, just not quite far enough for Paul Cummings. Watch out. Charge. Up charge. It is offensive. Go the other way. Nice job by Paul Cummings. Paul could feel it. it came off that high screen and hit the jump shot. He missed it, but this takes a lot of courage right here because Johnson is a big dude, and he's going full tilt, and Paul Cummins took all of it. The Leopards can tie with a bucket here. Well, they work hard to get their shots. Inside to Everest. Can he tie it up? Good. Fakes. Definitely pointed to as a goal this year was to win more games at home. 
as that shot won't go. Nice job of shaking that loose by Andrew Brown. Nice job of contesting the jump shot as well. And Lafayette so far has not won at home. They're 0 and 2. Now that's the dribble penetration, and you know, Fry's man's got to go to get help on Barbosa. Brown loses it inside. On the move. Hodges, end to end. Oh, what a block! Bilal Abdullah with a block. Down to Cummins. Cummins up and in. Oh, my! And a bad sequence. How about it? Ha! Started with Bilal rejection. Lafayette off to the races, and Paul Cummins takes it right at the chest of Proctor. This block is nasty. We'll be back. Dula Boy, at work. Yeah, he never gives up on the play, Gary. And I'll tell you what, Brian Hodges doesn't know what hit him. Bilal slaps it off the backboard and in one motion starts a fast break for the Leopards. Looks like one on three, but really it's one on one right here. And I think Paul Cummins makes a great decision, Gary. Take it right at the chest of Daryl Proctor. He does so and draws the foul. Dan Mowdy has a report. Here's Dan. All right, Gary, what a difference a year makes. This was the biggest loss of a season ago for Lafayette against this UMBC team. Some 35 points, the difference in the scoring. And yet the Leopards are battling like never before tonight here at Kirby. Now it happened. Oh, yeah. 61-60. The Leopards are there again. Green outside short. And Green with a rebound. On the floor. It's still on the floor. Timeout says... Yeah. just that Paul hits his 13th Paul is seventh in school history in triples Andrew Brown is sixth that's Paul's 139th a soft triple for Paul Cummins his second and that gets Lafayette a little healthier as they're now down by seven as we approach the two-minute bar now they needed that one desperately Gary but great movement without the ball you saw Lafayette they they jump shot yeah great job by Ted Detmer to set him up Ted is such a clever passer, Gary, and a good ball handler for a big guy. Just set him up with a dribble handoff. Paul Cummins from way outside. That's his third triple of the ball game. Well, you wonder if it won't be a test of wills, and Lafayette has a lot more seniors, Gary, and even though Rutgers is out of the Big East, these are still guys that are officiating crew, Gary, that understands advantage, disadvantage. Crossover dribble, A.B. almost steals it away. Great Murray Colton from a great pass from Paul Cummins. That is just great pass. But you know, Gary, if you put kids on the court, the game happens. If you put them and position them as a coach on the court in the right spots, you can't plan. It's back. Basakis to Bilal Abdullah to Gruner. And that's going to be a reach foul called on Pettis. Colton's man. And you know what? You can't plan this. The game just happens. Watch the pass. It's the only way that Paul Cummins can get that pass to Merrick Colton. Butch Van Bredikoff used to call it organized confusion. That's an oxymoron. The, the way Fran O'Hanlon develops his offense is you, you create spontaneity. If you think about those words, that's an oxymoron. Won't be able to get it down. There's Matt Bentley again. Yeah, and he just couldn't quite gather it in, but at that time, a quick timeout for the Leopards, and uh, stranger things have happened, Gary. Uh, the way Rutgers handles the ball with their quickness, I, I, it, it's, it's a tall mountain to climb for the Leopards. Fran O'Hanlon continues to go offense. Oh, that's a walk. 
<laughs> and Fred Hill is livid right now. Well, the last thing you want to do is turn the ball over, Gary, and that possession took all of 10 seconds. Well, they haven't uh, really done a very good job, John, of... <laughs> One shot, one shot.